All right, in the video today, I want to demonstrate how to double flare steel line. But first, I want to go over the different types of steel lines that you may run into. What we're going to manufacture today is this style here, a double flare steel tube. Uh, it's folded in on itself at a 45 degree angle, and the nut, which comes up against the back of it, also has a 45 flare in it. And when it's tightened, it will crimp or uh, pinch that flare against the inside of a, a fitting, and it will uh, retain fluid, such as brake fluid or fuel. The other style you might run into on the brake system, real common, is what they call an ISO or bubble flare. Also has a nut. It's not folded in on itself, but it is bulged out and it has a uh, taper both uh, both sides of the uh, line. And as the nut is pulled in, it will crimp that into a fitting. One will not replace the other. Two different uh, sizes, two different styles, two different uh, uh, choices. So, but this one here uh, we'll deal with later, but this is the one we're going to manufacture today. So usually when you start, you get steel tubing either in a straight line, which may already have flares on it, uh, or you might get it in a roll with uh, just a, a cut end. What you want to do is you want to roll out the, uh, the tubing, lay it flat on the bench, just unroll it, unravel it for whatever length you need. I always like to straighten it a little bit and then take a good look at the end. If it's anything but perfect, we're going to trim or cut. So we use a tubing cutter. And I have a couple different styles here. This is a smaller one, um, but the use is the same. You open it up, you slide it in on the roller, slide the tubing in on the rollers, and then bring it down so it touches, put a little bit of pressure on, and then you're going to rotate it around. It will score the tubing. And then every time you rotate it around, you turn the knob a little bit more, and it will cut through slowly and produce a nice, clean, square end. What we're looking for to double flare. Now, if you had a damaged flare end, the rollers does have a groove here that the original flare could fit into. You can see here. So you can cut that flare off and reflare it if, the, let's say, it got uh, damaged in some, some fashion, wasn't sealing anymore. Uh, the mini one does not have that, but this is good for probably up to three quarters of an inch. This one's good for well over an inch. Most of what you're going to run into is 3 16 to 3 8 for brake and fuel. Oil. In, the, in the shop, you'll be working off a job sheet, and it does give us instruction on straightening the tubing, cutting the tubing. Uh, before we start the actual flare, we want to make sure that there's no burrs in the end. I like to use a, a countersink and a handle here, and you simply Rotate it in there, knock the burr off a couple times. Some guys will take a file and just nip it, but then remember the most important thing is no burrs and it's still square. So we got a nice clean square edge. The tool we're going to use is a split yoke flaring tool, and if you see there's two sides to it. One side's flat, nothing on it. The other side has the sizes, and it also has a tape to match the flare. Let's match the 45 that we're going to put it on there. Uh, this thing is designed to be clamped in the vise. Mount it firmly in the vise. We'll open this up. Right, the line that we're going to double flare is quarter inch. So we have it cut nice and square, deburred. Don't forget to put the line nut on with the taper facing to where the flare is going to be. So the hex part, the nut part will be uh, away. And then we're gonna place this into our split yoke in the quarter inch opening. Remember, uh, we got the numbers on the top here. They also have the taper. We're gonna set the uh, height then. Let's get our button here. So, small button, quarter inch. These are the instruction sheet. That'll help us to set the height. There is a ridge 
the middle of this button here. That is the site, the height setting for our tubing. Lay this on top. Loosen the wing nuts just enough so we can slide that down. Make it level with the top. Okay. The button. And then we're going to tighten this by hand. We could probably almost get it to where it's tight enough by hand. It's closed, but we want to go no more than a half a turn more. And we'll tighten the wing nut closest to the tubing first. And we'll draw this one closed. So we're looking at there's no gap on either side. Pinch of the tubing. If you leave it loose in any way, it will just push that tubing straight down through. We won't get the proper flare because we're losing the height. Take our button. Next step. Put the pin end into the tubing. Make sure you have the proper size. Take the presser tool. This type you slide over and you unscrew it until it slides over the button. Square it up. Make sure the button is square. And then we're going to simply tighten this down by hand. Moderate pressure. You can see the Button just about touch the top of the split yoke. Back it off. Now the top of that tubing has been taken and bulged out, almost like that bubble flare we talked about earlier. But that's only the first step for the 45 double flare. We're now going to take the pressing tool without the quarter inch button and we're going to finish it off. We're going to fold it in on itself. Square it up, tighten it once again. Moderate pressure, back it off. Do that one way. And let's see if we can get it to where you can see. There's a nice shiny seat, 45 degrees, made by the cone or taper on this uh, pressing tool that has finished off that flare, folded it in on itself. That's what we're looking for. We'll take it out of the split yoke. Swing that back up. Turn it off. Loosen it up. Open it up. And a nice double flare will bring the nut up here. And that would be ready to be installed in wheel cylinder, a brake caliper, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to cut this piece off because I want to demonstrate one more thing. So whatever the desired length is, your, your project in class here, uh, we ask you to cut either five or six inches. It's like five inches of steel tubing. So we're going to cut this. I'm going to show you how to use the tubing bender. At least the one we have in the shop here. There's various types. Some of them look like a spring. Some of them uh, have a fold over arm, like a pair of pliers almost. So we have our tubing here, and whatever um, length we want, where the bend to to be. We've got to figure out what the start point is for the bend. And you would place that mark in line with the zero on the front of our tool. So I'm just going to bend this one at about two inches. So, so the, the line nut here is uh, just past the, the holding bar. But you mark it and let's say I want to bend it 30 degree. That's what I need to get around a certain component. <clears throat> With that on zero, zero, just take it and you fold it, oops, but we'll go 45 because I've got my own strength. So there we go. So that, with the tubing in the proper size group, because there's 3 16 quarter and then uh, 5 16 and 3 8 is the last one, that bent that to a 45 degree. That's what it looks like. A nice gradual bend, proper angle, it's not kinked and fluid can flow through there uh, unrestricted. So that's double flaring 
embedding of steel tubing for brake lines and uh, fuel lines, most commonly. 